We live at the base of the Ree Hills. The Ree Hills area is primarily grasslands and the flat land below the Ree Hills is primarily farmland. Initially, we had a considerable amount of farm ground and when we started planting them back to grasses, we were limited in our knowledge of what to do and, and initially we just planted a monoculture of switchgrass. As time went on, after the switchgrass grew, other plants, usually considered invaders, bluegrass and uh, brome grass moved in. And uh, basically the land does not like a monoculture. It likes many plants out there. So since that time, we've done some interseedings of uh, just common alfalfa, sicer milkvetch, western wheatgrass. And uh, so we're trying to improve the plant diversity in the fields that we have planted back to grasses. Now, as far as how we graze them, it depends on the type of grass. The early season grasses, like the invaders of Kentucky bluegrass and brome grass, we're not worried about hurting them because they seem to do very well. And so we're pretty hard on them early on. Then we're out of those pastures, like the switchgrass and the big blue stem, and give them time to grow and develop. And so in that way, we're putting pressure on the grasses we don't want and trying to increase the grasses that we do want. We're using electric fencing along with cows to uh, control where we want the cattle to graze and at what times we want them to graze. Many times with these, uh, especially native grass seedings, you need uh, two to three years before you start seeing results. And uh, now that we're five to 10 years down the road on some of these, the results are incredible. But if you, if you don't have the patience that nature has, you will be unhappy. So you need to you need to change your frame of mind. And yet once those perennial plants are established, you don't have to continue to receive them annually. So so patience short term, but payback long term. If you have the healthy soil and then you have the healthy plants and insects and birds and the healthy cows, um, it's just such a win-win. Uh, realizing that a lot of those birds and pollinators are totally dependent upon the habitat and the plants of the native prairies. Those ever, ever changing species of blooming plants is the key to our pollinators. And if one in three bites of food that we eat is dependent upon pollinators, it's important to all of us three-fourths of the fruits and vegetables that we eat are dependent upon pollinators. So pollinators are important to us. So what are we gonna do about it? I think we need to just get real serious real fast. That's why we decided to stop using a lot of uh, chemical spray on any weed issues that we had. We're doing biological control of stem miner weevils and uh, gall flies for our Canadian thistle. And we've seen a, a rust fungus also start to participate. And along with the drought, we've seen a, a significant success with just biological and non-chemical weed control. I think just a natural, innate human need to connect with the world around us. And when you can touch the soil and smell it and feel it and see what it can do and know that that is what feeds and nourishes us to be strong and healthy and vibrant and the whole circle is healthy or not healthy based upon our management decisions. The contribution to soil health is, is incalculable. We, we saw what it was like when it was farmed and the topsoil was in the ditch and the road was washed out. And we see what it's like now when that soil is healthy, the plants are healthy, the animals are healthy, the water's clean, it's beautiful. I don't think we'd be here without it. <laughs>